All right, so as we get started on today's final day of the SEO for social uh, for for web for businesses class, uh, I'm going to ask the class for a moment. Are there any questions or concerns that are on your mind regarding anything we've learned so far? Keeping in mind what we're going to talk about today. So any questions? Any comments on anything so far in the class? All right, question, yes. It's kind of on and off subject. Um, there's a company here called Yes, like Yes, that particular website, I don't think I've heard. Um, but it sounds like it's a kind of a website that is similar to others where they will do the work for you. Um, I don't know specifically on that site how useful it is, and it may or may not be in general useful to you. Everything that we're learning in these classes, these days here, you can probably accomplish them yourself pretty well, but there's always going to be someone that will want to sell a service to do it for you. Comment on that? Yeah, I think what Yex is is that they want people who list it with all the local so the purpose of that and similar ones then are trying to help you improve your visibility they're going to put you on listings or directories or trying to get more attention for you well the thing with that again is that's only a piece of the puzzle because if you're not updating your website, if you're not blogging, if you're not on social media, okay, you maybe you appear on people's, you know, on people's radar that you appear on a on that listing, but then they visit your site and you haven't updated in six months, twelve months. Are they still really going to be interested in hiring you? So those sorts of listing services have some purpose, but really it's only one piece of the puzzle. And if you're not doing the other pieces the updates, having a nice website, being on social media, then it might not be as beneficial for you to invest in that, especially if it's not free. Oftentimes it's not free because they're selling a service. Yes? Do you have uh, recommendations for um, blogging clients or just uh, normal sites that aren't blogs? Uh, recommendations um, for blogging, really the best answer to give on that is WordPress. Um, there's other ones out there, of course, Blogger and um, other ones, but really WordPress is the big one. Um, I, I guess I meant like if you don't have a, like a blogging website, it's just a straight website without any blogging. Is there like a plugin you can use for to, use to create a blog and you know, a section of your page? Perhaps, uh, do you mean like, for example, the design of the site? Um, I think with I think he's saying is that you have an existing website, but you're not using WordPress as the, the platform. You want to integrate a, a blog into the website, like a widget, a blogging widget or something like that. Well, that's the thing. If you've got a website and if it's built in WordPress, it can do the blog or it can do the regular website. So if you if you did create uh, your website in, in WordPress to then add the blog feature of, the, of that is pretty uh, easy. But let's say you created it in something else. Let's say Joomla or Dreamweaver or something. It's straight PHP, HTML. Yeah, then that, um, I, I don't quite have an answer. That's, that's a bigger issue to, to integrate a blog into a website that maybe didn't have the feature built in. I'm sure there's plugins and software to do that, but because WordPress is the biggest um, market share, that's the one usually that I recommend and talk about. Any other general questions? Okay, so because, uh, because WordPress is the bigger platform, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, specify some things to do on your site and obviously then I'm gonna log into a WordPress site and I'm going to give 
examples and opinions on how to edit the site. If you don't have a WordPress site, that's okay. You'll still be able to accomplish these concepts on your own site. Maybe the screen is different, maybe the buttons are different, but the concepts should still be the same. So if you've got a WordPress site, what I would recommend is to log into it if you're able to. If not, uh, that's okay. Again, take notes and follow along, but I'm going to log into a WordPress site and talk about specifics. Okay, so we talk a lot about things in theory, and I will talk about some things in practice. But again, if you don't have a WordPress site, you can still get these concepts. Remember, one of the first activities that we did was the long tail keyword strategy. We developed those keywords that define what our website is about. The purpose of that, then, is to better understand who you're going to, to target as a, as a target audience and uh, what you're going to write specifically on your website or on social media and the like. So I've got my website open. It's a WordPress site. Uh, I haven't logged into it in a little while and it's telling me I've got a bunch of updates, which of course is normal. The, the WordPress software needs updates. Um, if you have a WordPress site, it's, again, the website with one of the largest market shares, very powerful, it has a lot of features, it has plugins. If you take my WordPress class, in there we talk about using, um, we talk about using uh, an e-commerce uh, plugin to be able to sell products. So on top of a, word, a plain old WordPress site, we can add a plugin, we can add features to sell products. It's very powerful. Um, and so if you've got a WordPress site, you should have then the ability to add plugins. So I've got a plugins screen and uh, I can add a new plugin. And I'm going to mention about um, three or four or five plugins that I recommend that I always install uh, on most of my clients' websites because they're so useful. One of the WordPress plugins I recommend is called a Kismet. This is a way for you to have a civil commenting system, a civil message board. Uh, we talked about I think just last week from the excerpts of the book that it mentioned the ability for people to comment on your website or message boards and such that uh, could help your SEO to some degree. But we talked about also that suddenly you're going to become a moderator. You're going to need to uh, filter out the negative comments, the off-topic comments, the spam. Well, a plugin like Akismet helps you with that. It's a very popular plugin. It's got perfect five stars out of 447 reviews, 1 million active installations updated two weeks ago. And this comes from the official uh, WordPress company, Automatic. So they put out this free plugin that helps you fight spam on your site, basically. It's very useful. If you've got a website that's in WordPress and you don't have a Kismet, I highly recommend it. So I'm going to be mentioning these plugins, why they're useful and so forth, but I'm not going to tell you how to install them, how to use them and such. That's a little bit out of our scope. And again, not everyone has WordPress. Most of us probably have WordPress, but I want to talk in specific enough 
um, to help us out. So a kismet it helps you fight spam. Another very good one that I recommend is called Jetpack. This one's also officially from the automatic company which owns WordPress. And um, Jetpack is um, a bunch of mini features that really improve your site. If you've ever made a website in WordPress.com, you have all of these features uh, that you don't have if you set up your website through WordPress.org. So this will connect your website, your website that you bought with GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, where you've got WordPress. It'll connect it then with WordPress.com and give you extra features, such as the ability to share on social media very easily, uh, login protection so someone doesn't try to steal your password, it will create a mobile-friendly website if you don't have one. That's one of the important things that the search engines look at nowadays. Does your website look good on a mobile device? It might look really nice on a nice big monitor, but when someone visits your website on a mobile device, if, it's, if the text is really small or if the text is getting cut off, that's an indicator that it's not mobile-friendly. So your website should automatically shrink and conform to the size of a mobile device. If it doesn't, that's probably hurting your SEO. It's going to hurt you even more as the search engines make that much more of a requirement. So the good thing is that Jetpack will turn any website, any WordPress website that is not mobile friendly, it can turn it mobile friendly with the click of a button. What else? Uh, it has other features like uh, some nice um, slideshows, some graphical slideshows. Maybe you need to show a bunch of products. The built-in WordPress gallery is okay, but then you get some better ones with Jetpack. This one's also highly rated, and many, many users using it worldwide, and it's been updated recently, so Jetpack. Jetpack also, one of the things that I like about it is that it has the ability to connect with your, with your webmaster tools pretty easily. When we talked about the webmaster tools a couple of weeks ago, um, for several of you I had, uh, I had checked and you had WordPress and we used uh, the feature here to, to add the ability to verify your site. So those are some popular ones there. Here's a couple that might not appear right away, but I also recommend. Let me get the proper name for it. <coughs> okay, so this other one that I recommend is Google Analytics by Yoast. Uh, Team Yoast. Is a, is a big name in the world of WordPress. They're a company that creates several plugins that add extra features to WordPress. There's a whole cottage industry of companies that, um, that create themes or plugins um, for WordPress, and Team Yoast is one of the big ones. So the purpose of this plugin is to connect your WordPress site easily with Google Analytics. When you were trying to set up your own Google Analytics and you possibly had a little trouble, this plugin here really makes it easy. You, you install it, you click a button that says Authorize, and then basically it's done. It also is very popular, highly rated, many installations, and uh, I use this as a, as a quick way to connect my website or a client's website with their analytics and once analytics is set up you get this wealth of information about your visitors and such. So it's a bit of a one-trick pony but it's a very good trick connecting your website with Google Analytics. Question. Yes? Is Google Analytics by itself different than Google Analytics by Yoast? Well, in a sense yes because Google Analytics by Yoast is the name of their plugin to connect to Google Analytics. 
Um, so it's kind of a weird name, but they should just call it the Yoast Google Analytics tool, something like that. That's just to get hooked up with Google Analytics if you don't know how to do it regularly. Yes, it facilitates you connecting your Google Analytics account to your WordPress, and this is the middleman to do it. Another very useful uh, Yoast plugin that I recommend is Yoast SEO. Uh, this one has even more ratings. Um, and this is a plugin that I'll show in a little bit more detail in a moment. I highly recommend it. Uh, this will let you handcraft every screen of your website for maximum SEO impact, specifically applying these long tail keywords. We develop these keywords. Okay, great. Now, how do I use them? How do I apply them to my site? I'll get into detail uh, a little bit later today on that. But this is a great plugin because what it does is it uses this metaphor here of these, uh, of the stoplight of these colored dots where it will analyze every page on your site and give you a rating, red, orange, or green, regarding SEO. If your page, let's say your about page, if it analyzes your about page, it might give you a red, which tells you that's that page, that screen has poor SEO. It's not optimized enough. And it will tell you exactly you need to do this, 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 and this based on the latest SEO standards. You then follow the follow the advice of the plugin, it'll reanalyze it, and then it might tell you, okay, great, you did a better job or you did a great job. So this plugin then at a glance will let me check this is green, this is yellow, this is green, that's red. Oh, I need to fix that page. It has problems. This is not the only big name in the world of SEO optimization plugins. There's another big one called the, I think it's called the All-in-One SEO Pack. Yeah, All-in-One SEO Pack. This is another famous one. This is a competitor. Um, I have not used this one enough to recommend either of them. Uh, I have colleagues that have used this one and they also like it, but they're both trying to do the same thing, helping you optimize your site page by page. And good SEO really requires that you optimize your site page by page, because your about page <laughs> needs to have certain keywords attached to it, your home page needs to have certain keywords. Your products page, individual products, need their own optimization. You can't use the same 10 keywords all over your site. You want to use this one on that page, these two on that page, this one on that page. And so All-in-One SEO Pack and Yoast SEO are both designed to help you do that, which means you don't want to install both of them. They're both trying to do the same thing. They're going to get into each other's way. So either or, I personally have used Yoast for a long time. Some of my colleagues have used the SEO pack and they like that one. So either or, you should be okay. But notice, this one has more ratings. It's got 1400 ratings, whereas this one's got 227. So more people are using and rating the other one. But they're both good. And in a little bit, I'll, I'll circle back to how it works exactly. One of the things about SEO that is important is for you not to have broken links. The websites will analyze your site, and they will follow every link that you have on your site. And if it runs into broken links, it makes a note of it. I can't tell you how many broken links can I have until Google takes me off the front page. I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that about Google or Bing or anything. They have that trade secret, that algorithm that determines that. If you've got maybe seven broken links out of a site that's got a thousand links, that might not be a problem. But if you've got seven broken links out of a website that has 12 links, that might be a big problem. So again, I'm not going to tell you a value. Don't make sure you don't have these number of broken links. Instead, what I'm going to tell you is a good plugin to help you deal with that. Question. 
if I were to look at this screen here and I were to click on the contact link and instead it says error, not found, that's a broken link because it didn't go to where I expected it to. So that's bad for me because I wanted to contact them and now it's broken. And that's bad for the search engine because it will then uh, see that you know that you don't that you're not a serious website because you've got broken links. Yes. So coming into your website, we were talking about backlinks. What backlinks are? Other people broken links are anything on your site. People, what you just described, they go to contact. And it's not working for your site. It's both. It's both. Within your site, if someone's on the home page trying to go to contact and it's broken, that's a broken link. But if someone is coming from Twitter and they followed a tweet with a link to your products page and that's broken, that's also a broken link. So your backlinks and your internal links. Okay. All of those are important to make sure that you don't have any broken links. Yes? I have an example of broken links because my son is applying for college, yeah. senior. And the San Diego Unified School District, all the schools, have a broken link that's transcript request. So when you click from any high school on transcript request, it goes to an error page. Oh, and they see. haven't fixed it yet, and the college application deadlines are rapidly approaching. <laughs> that's that's a big pretty problem. catastrophic there, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully everyone is complaining to them to fix it, yes. or to at least put the direct link, because even if they can't fix the website itself, they can still tweet or put on Facebook or send out an email, hey everyone, sorry, but here's the link. They should have the ability to get you the link, even if you can't get to it from the page. Yes? So which plugin helps you with the broken link? I was about to say. So the plugin is called Redirection. It's this plugin, very simply named Redirection, and it's by John Bradley. So again, WordPress plugins don't always come officially from the WordPress official company. They come from many developers out there in the world. WordPress is great because it's an open platform where people can create themes, can create plugins, can add value to WordPress. And most of the time, the plugins are free. There's plugins once in a while here and there that are not free. And how much? It, it depends. So you might have a plugin for $5, $40, $100. It depends. And it will always tell you um, on the plugin somewhere, it'll tell you if it's free or not. Redirection, all of the ones I've mentioned so far are free, although they, they might have extras that you might pay for. And oftentimes what you pay for is tech support because they will give you the documentation on how this plugin works but uh, if you really need help on your specific case they usually sell tech support maybe you pay one time forty dollar fee and you get you know a year or more of direct tech support from these companies I've dealt with that too I've used some of these plugins paid the extra fee and then the developer uh, you know with with the proper access logs into the site and fixes it for you so, as I said, it's a cottage industry. So redirection. It sounds like a very, uh, very boring name, and what it does, it's a plugin to manage three or one redirections and keep track of four or four errors without requiring knowledge of Apache HT access files. In short, it helps helps you keep track of your broken links and to fix them. Again, I'm not going to go into detail about all of these plugins, uh, how they work exactly. But in, when you've installed this plugin, you're going to get a screen, a report that tells you these are the broken links we found. And it's going to be monitoring your site all day long. So it's going to keep track of people try to visit this contact us page. But your site, your, your site is actually contact. See, that, that happens sometimes. Let's say I designed my site, victor.com, and I had contact us. And then you take this class or other classes where we talk about that actually a better name for that would just simply be contact because contact us doesn't apply for everyone and what if someone called it contact us without a dash or contact the company it's becoming a bit of a of a standard that your contact page is simply called contact Okay, so you learn that in this class, and then you go back and you, and you fix that. You fix that on your site. The problem with that now is you might have had traffic coming to your site at Contact Us. You might have had on your Facebook, which you forgot to change, 
on your Facebook you've got a link that says contact us but you've changed it to contact so when someone tries to follow that link from your Facebook broken link so the redirection plugin is keeping track of that and it says you had seven hits at contact us which is a broken link okay that's a problem what's the solution the plugin will then further say create a redirection create a 301 redirection so that when someone visits contact us they will be in a sense intercepted and sent over to contact no more broken link they're redirected to the right screen people or the search engines etc you've moved the page you've redirected the traffic to the appropriate endpoint so that's what this plugin does it keeps track of those links and then gives you a very pretty easy feature to then redirect traffic so that it doesn't hurt your SEO and that would be something I would check like once a month uh, read the report oh I see this broken link and then you would fix it this is also unfortunately the plugin that is going to stress you out because then you're going to see as, as you get more and more famous on online this is the plugin that's going to show you all the hackers trying to break into your site this is going to show you the bad guys trying to access particular pages that have known vulnerabilities so this is another reason why you want to update your WordPress plugins because there may be a plugin that has some sort of security vulnerability that the hackers know about and you're gonna see on your redirect logs people keep trying to access that file uh, so it's uh, a little disheartening but it's the cost of being online nowadays just just a moment just a moment yes so on um a broken link, what if you have a page but it really doesn't have content? Is that considered a broken link? Nope, as long as someone can click the link and follow it to get to a page, even if it has nothing, that's not a broken link. That's just no content. Yes. Does it also help remedy, say there is a hacker or hackers, does it provide? Or is it not quite it's just exactly it's just showing you that someone's trying to break into your site it doesn't tell you that they succeeded or that they failed it's just going to show you there's people trying to access this file so I can see there people are trying to access a plugin that I don't even have an installed because the the hackers know that that plugin is outdated and vulnerable so it doesn't it doesn't really fix anything it just tells you what's wrong in that sense so how would one go about that's a much deeper issue that i can't really give a short answer to 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 fix if your site is hacked or if you're getting a lot of traffic from hackers i can't or or if you're not getting the traffic is it possible that the hacker is running into another direction possibly Possibly. Um, possibly. Uh, that'd be hard to to figure out sometimes, but um, possibility. Yes. When I mentioned Jetpack earlier, it has a feature that you can activate that helps you uh, that helps you protecting your your login screen with some of that. So so Jetpack has an aspect of that, but there's so many attack vectors, the fancy term for ways of people trying to break into your site. There's so many ways for people trying to break into your site that there there's no one cure all plugin that will do it unfortunately uh, you might have to use this plugin and the jetpack plugin and then also your provider like GoDaddy might give you uh, services or features for that too so it, there's just so many ways that a, an account uh, a website could be compromised that there's no silver bullet Okay, uh, here's another here's another plugin that I recommend. It's 
called duplicator. Duplicator plugin, it's from Life in the Grid, and a very good one, clearly. It's 5.5 stars, 923 ratings, half a million installs, updated three weeks ago. There are many solutions out there to make a backup of your website. If you're running one of these modern websites like WordPress, it's often integrated with a database without you ever really paying attention. All of the stuff that we see on screen, this pretty interface, behind the scenes, there's a database and code, and all of your stuff is saved in a database. Well, that means then that it's a little more complicated to back up your site. If you were creating a site several years ago, five, seven, ten years ago, it was just basically all HTML, and your whole site was in one folder, and if you make a copy of that folder, you've made a copy of your site, a backup. Nowadays, what you see is not what you get. Beneath the surface, there's many things. A database, for example, running on a server, uh, and interfacing with um, server-side scripting and such. So, to make a backup of your site now is a little more complicated, but there are many plugins out there that will help you with that. This is the one that I recommend. It's not the most user-friendly at times, but for what I needed to do and for my clients, it works really well. You install this plugin, you follow a couple of steps, and then it makes a copy of your site. Um, that copy then, I can save it on a flash drive, I can save it on an external drive, I can save it on my cloud storage like Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive or whatever. And the point of that is, let's say your site crashes. Let's say a hacker gets into it and messes everything up. If you've got a duplicate copy, then you can bring your site back. You can bring your site back to before it was compromised. So it makes a perfect copy, which then you can use to bring back your site. Yes? Does it have a, a scheduler? Can you schedule weekly automated? The, the free version does not. It is very much like, um, you know, sink or swim. You can read the manual and, and get it done. But the free version um, doesn't have that. There is a paid version. I don't know how much the paid version costs at the moment. It's probably forty to sixty dollars uh, license, and then that has more features: scheduling and remote backups and such. So there's other backup solutions out there too that probably built in for free have a scheduler. There's so many of them out there. There's only enough time in the day to learn everything. So this is the one that I've used for years, and I know it works, but it can be a little techy sometimes. Does anyone have any opinion if they've used WordPress of any backup plugins out there? No? Yeah. Well, let me, let me finish my thought here. So um, this one is a possibility, but it's not the, um, it's perhaps not the most user-friendly. But it does what I need it to do. Yes? So similar to the child theme? Is it what? Similar to child themes? Not quite, in that it is, uh, it is, its sole purpose is to just make a copy of your site completely. A child theme would really only be a copy of your theme. It doesn't save anything about your user information, your products, your database. So a child theme is just for aesthetic purposes. This one is more for backing up the whole site completely. Like the content. Everything. The content, the users, the products, everything, yes. Yes. Doesn't WordPress have the import and export? Yes, but... What's the difference between the two? It's very basic. The WordPress export is very basic, and it really assumes that you've got a site that already exists online that you want to transfer to a new host, for example. Let's say you're on, on Bluehost, and you want to transfer to HostMonster. That export-import works well for that, but it's not a backup solution. It's just a transfer from location to location. Yes? Are you saying that you can... It's, it's, it's like it's a hard, hard, uh, external hard drive? No, it's just... Uh, it's going to make a copy of your site, just like if I have this file here on the desktop. I've got that file. 
to make a copy of it, a backup of it, I would save it to my external hard drive. So I need to make a copy of that file. I need to make a copy of my whole site because it's full of thousands of files. So Duplicator makes a copy of all of those files and then you can copy that to an external drive as a backup. <coughs> yes? Uh, I, sorry, I just got here. So, um, the free version of WordPress, the mod, I don't know if I can get plugins. Is that right? Exactly. That's the big caveat here. If you've got a WordPress.com site, you will not have the ability for plugins because plugins are third party software. This one was made from life by Life in the Grid. The other one was John Godley. This one over here is WP Developers Club, Antonia. So uh, these are third-party developers not affiliated with WordPress. Therefore, WordPress.com does not want to tech support someone else's software. So they just completely remove the ability to add plugins if you've got a WordPress.com. But some of these things that I've mentioned are already built into your WordPress.com. So that's, that's a good thing at least. For example, Duplicator. In a, in a sense, a WordPress.com site already has this duplication protection because it's running on their official servers, which they are monitoring 24 hours a day and protecting. Okay. Any of the other ones that Jetpack is already built in, definitely. And uh, redirection. What's that? Akismet is already installed also. Uh, and... Um, Yoast SEO, no, unfortunately, and Yoast Analytics, no. You have, you have the built-in WordPress analytics. Um, you can get Google Webmaster Tools on your WordPress.com, but you can't get Google Analytics on your WordPress.com account, because it has its own. Question, yes? The big difference is the ability to do more. I've got my own website here, vmcinc.net, and on it I've got installed WordPress, which I downloaded from WordPress.com and installed on my site. So WordPress.org is basically the, the software, the manual, and do it yourself. And the .com is come here, create a site, you're ready to go. But you've got limitations. You cannot use extra plugins. And that's a big limitation because you can't add these extra features, you can't add e-commerce plugins, you can't add shopping cart plugins, you can't add extra galleries and such. So as training wheels, WordPress.com is very good. You can get up and running, get a free WordPress website right away. But it's limited in plugins and a couple of other features. So instead you want to get your own website from GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever, and get the WordPress software at WordPress.org and then install it on your site. But then the drawback of that is suddenly you're in charge of doing your updates, you've got to fix your security issues, you've got to find the right plugin, install it and configure it, and you have to deal with the tech support of those plugins. That's clearly an answer that will take <coughs> half an hour to explain. So uh, everyone's is a little bit different okay. because you might have a GoDaddy or a Bluehost or whatever and so forth. Uh, and everyone's a little bit different, but um, during the break and such, we can talk one-on-one -on -one to see your particular case. Okay, so uh, one more, I think, uh, one more plugin that I that I recommend here. Um, contact form seven. The WordPress.com and the Jetpack plugin for your WordPress.org site, they have a built-in contact form ability that works pretty well, but it's a little limited. So there are plugins that give you more features. In Contact Form 7, 
is one of the popular ones. Again, it's got over a million installations, very high reviews. And so Contact Form 7 um, is relatively simple, and it will let you create contact forms that are more powerful than the, than the built-in one. For example, you have a field asking for first name, last name, email. That's pretty basic. You get that from WordPress. But then you also want to ask, where did you hear about us? And a drop-down list of seven options on TV, on the radio, newsletter, word of mouth, etc. You can't do that with the basic WordPress uh, contact very well. This one's much better. You can add um, multiple recipients, meaning when someone fills this contact form out, it's going to get sent somewhere. We can have multiple people get that result. You can get the, you know, the the CEO get it as well as the CFO. You can send it, send that results to multiple people. You have a uh, pretty robust error messaging and replies um, for the users, and uh, you can collect all that information in a in a in a in a database as well because having an email database is pretty important. An email database allows you to reach out to potential customers and, and email them and let them know about special events, sales, etc. You're probably part of several mailing lists that you get mails once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever. You get mails telling you about uh, an update, about a sale, etc. And perhaps on some of them you don't like that and you unsubscribe. And on others you really like it and you love getting those emails. Same thing here, we can collect those emails from people contacting you. If they were interested enough to contact you, they might be interested enough to be part of your mailing list, which they can remove themselves of, of course. But uh, Contact Form 7 is a highly recommended plugin to add uh, a more powerful contact form. There's other ones, of course. Um, contact Form to Email. So that seems to do similar things. It's got three and a half re reviews, but it's only got 30 reviews compared to 767. So the way you decide, there's so many plugins to choose from. Let's say you want to add a Twitter plugin. Well, you search Twitter and you get a thousand results. The way you decide what a good plugin is is by looking at this little bar here. How many ratings does it have? But how many ratings in total, if it has five stars but it's got two ratings, obviously the theme, uh, the plugin author themselves gave themselves five stars and their mother. So you want to get plugins that have a lot of ratings, highly rated, and also a lot of users. You don't want to download a plugin that's only got 40 users, maybe, because then there's not enough of an incentive. For it to be a good plugin, no one's really using it. You also want to make sure it's compatible with your version of WordPress. You may have an old or new version of WordPress that is not compatible. And when was it updated? One month ago is pretty good. If it hasn't been updated in three months, let's say, that might not be so good because perhaps security vulnerabilities have cropped up that the author of the plugin never fixed. And then these these hackers and spammers and crackers are trying to get into your your site and they're looking for vulnerabilities when a vulnerability is found this underground circle shares it with everyone and everyone then tries to break into your site because your contact form is old and outdated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking too that could some of these be uh, have their own bugs and, and uh, unfortunately Unfortunately, yes. That's why plugins are completely disabled on WordPress.com. When we have our own website, we have the ability to install any plugin, but it's sort of buyer beware. There could be problems. The way you determine that also is check these ratings. Three out of five stars is not so good. Out of 40,000 installations, it's been updated two months ago. I believe we can check somewhere here more details. Somewhere here we can read people's reviews. Yes, right here, reviews. And then we can figure out, well, why are people rating it so lowly? Maybe very recently bugs were discovered. Or maybe it's just not working anymore. Yes? 
Are some of them um, kind of certified? Are some of these programs and themes, I notice they're saying this is certified the malware free by this human. Hmm. Which would actually be sure those programs are. Programs and themes are clean. You know, I've seen some of those. Well, um, if I can find that screen, or if you can help me find that screen at some point, I'd like to see that because. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if it's contact form, but I, I've seen danger that say that. I've seen some plugins certified virus free and stuff like that. Possibly. Um, yeah. yeah I've got a really big one you're making a box off of. I'm yeah. sure they're going to keep that thing clean. Exactly. So I don't know if here in the word. Press plugin marketplace. It says that, which this is where I would like it to say it, that it's certified. But because WordPress, in a in a sense, is, is very open source, they don't really vet these things that much. Well, I have a, I, I found a domain name here. Didn't. No. Check Divi out. It's mm -hmm. it's um, it's a domain name composer mm. and it's it's just got all this fantastic stuff. And that's the theme itself? The theme itself, you can build it from scratch with uh, 87 different uh, themes that you can use this on. Uh, and it's it's certified so all our stuff. It's clean malware free blah 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 certified as I don't know from all these places. Mm. I think they're these guys are in the domain it's like it looks like you're on Apple website when you go to mm. We probably will come back to it in a bit to, to check it out in class. Yeah. Gravity forms. Um, I personally haven't, but some of my colleagues have, and they they like it. So there's many solutions for the same problem. Uh, so gravity forms. Let's take a quick look here what its ratings are and such. Some of these plugins, you can't get them directly from this screen. You have to get them from their home page. So I don't, I don't see it popping up here, exactly the one. But Gravity Forms, it's a big one. And um, if it works for you, then it works pretty well. Um, there's many ways to, to do the same thing. Yeah. It's not free, though. Yeah, oftentimes. It's another contact form. So um, you can see here that there's a whole world of plugins to give you extra features. I've mentioned several here. And um, these are the ones that I'm usually applying to a, a client because they have all of these great extra abilities that get added to your site. Uh, any questions or comments or opinions on any plugins that you might have used yourself? On the same vein of, of plugins, I'll mention something regarding themes, because themes are the design of your site. So here I've got a very, very basic design, and let's say I'm tired of my design. I want a new design. I want a new theme. You have in WordPress the ability to edit the appearance, the theme of your, of your site, and inside of the WordPress site you have a marketplace like this to find a new theme but let me show you a couple of third-party external uh, companies that specialize in making WordPress themes and such one is called elegantthemes.com oh it's in here yeah they're, they're, uh, they use security they're so security tight that Secure Seal ran it multiple, multiple times because they couldn't believe how tight their security was. Okay. That, that sounds like the site itself is very secure. Unfortunately, it could be that the theme or plugin might not be as secure, but I would. Or, yeah. But I would still take that into consideration that if they've been rated and certified as secure and such, that's still a very good thing. So what Elegant Themes is, is basically a, a design studio that their purpose is to 
publish premium WordPress themes. Premium means not free. So you can get plenty of free themes from WordPress. I can go to Appearance Themes, Add New, and then in built into my WordPress, I can go here and see a bunch of great themes, usually for free. But there's a whole world out there outside of the WordPress marketplace here where people are creating themes where then you can upload. So it's like going, going around the marketplace directly to the developers. And so Elegant Themes is one of them. What they do is they sell you a yearly subscription to access there are 87 themes, 87 in the grand scheme of, all, of everything is not a lot, but these are 87 themes that have been handcrafted, designed really well, optimized, made very useful and powerful and nice to look at and such. There's Divi right there actually, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one. They just made a huge update on it. Hmm. And so, for your price of subscribing to them, you get great designs with advanced features and support, tech support. Because once you make your own website, you're a webmaster. You're, you're, you have to manage your site, all aspects of it. And if you're just trying to get online to blog, or to sell your products, or to do something, you don't want to handle the tech support. You want to do the main, your main task. You want to sell products, you want to write your, your blogs, you, you want to gain members to your nonprofit organization, you want to do that. The, the purpose of you being online, not to, to deal with broken computer stuff. Well, that's where the tech support comes in. And for the and for the price, we'll take a look at the price. For the yearly price, $69 per year is not bad at all. Well, that's for the developer package. No, that's so for the person. For the yes, so for once a year, for the personal level $69, $89 for developer, and lifetime access, one-time fee of $250. And here it tells you what's included in each one. For example, if you get the personal one, you'll get the themes and such, but not access to all their extra plugins, and not access to the original layered Photoshop files. If you go to the next level up, then you get these extra plugins that they've also developed that work really well on their themes, and the original Photoshop files in case you want to make deep changes to the theme. So for most of you probably this one is is good, $69 a year, $20 more. You won't get the themes that you won't get that visual composer you get that or the Oh it doesn't include the visual composer? Yeah, it's their own version of visual composer as a plugin. Because I I, oh, okay. I got the sixty nine and then quickly had to upgrade twenty bucks in order to get the makes sense because it says right here it doesn't include the extra plugins. <laughs> So we've used this one. Um, we don't currently have a subscription to it, but we've used it, uh, and we had the developer one. And it's eighty-nine dollars one-time fee. I'm sorry, uh, once a year fee. If you want access lifetime, two hundred and fifty dollars. So it pays for itself in a few years, right? It pays for itself in two and three quarters of a year. So if you're still going to have a website three years from now, you still might want to access their, their themes. So the 250 does pay itself back eventually. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that happens sometimes with themes. You buy a theme and it's only $20. But that was $20 only for one website, not for all seven of your websites. You have to pay $20 for each of your seven websites. Well, here then again, if you've got more than one website and you want a different theme, a different design, or the same one across your seven websites, victor.com, victorsdogwalking.com, victorsbakery.com, I have with the one cost here access to put it on all of them. It's the same for developers. So Elegant Themes, uh, we've used it, we recommend it. We're not affiliated with them, so we're not getting, I'm not getting any kickback from them. Uh, but they do have a good amount of themes. Not a lot, but they keep putting them out and they're really good themes. For their, just the problem, their, their documentation is out of this world. They've got videos of every single plugin. 
how to do it mm -hmm. on YouTube or just yeah, so that's the thing also. You've got the perfect theme and the perfect plugin. How do they work? You can read the documentation. Sometimes the documentation is not so good because the person or the company that developed the theme is more of a developer than a writer, and therefore their documentation doesn't follow. But these guys, they've got, they've got it really on point regarding documentation and video tutorials and such. Now, this other one that I'll recommend this one's even bigger, themeforest.net. Yes, themeforest.net. They're part of the larger Envato marketplace, Envato market, where this this is like this is a bazaar. This is a marketplace. This is not one company selling you themes and such. This is a marketplace for multiple companies and developers for them to sell their stuff. But ThemeForest checks the themes for compatibility, rates them, has user ratings and feedback. They're a facilitator for people to find what they need. Sort of like, you know, the Google Play Store or the iTunes Store. Someone uploads their game to iTunes Apple checks it, makes sure it's compatible and such, then makes it available, then people can download it and rate it and such. So this is more of a, you know, a marketplace, a clearinghouse, a, a middleman for you to find what you need. So then Theme Forest is the section of Envato where it's about themes for WordPress. But themes for WordPress and Magento and Joomla and, and Dreamweaver and such. So basically themes for most of the platforms. You also have a section of Envato Market called Video Hive, where people are uploading stock and royalty-free videos. Let's say you need a video. So here's some video, cat videos, seven dollars for this cat video. See, I can put that on my site. That would have been perfect uh, yesterday, which was National Cat Day. Okay, so eight dollars for that video clip, twelve dollars. Audio uh, jumping. They will put in your own logo to the video and such. But that's part of the whole uh, Envato market. You can look for themes, videos, audio. You can get audio clips, graphics, etc. But anyway, Theme Forest. This is the one where it says over 20,000 website templates and themes from $4. So a $4 theme might get you the results that you need, or it might be a little limited. Maybe the $40 one is a little better. And so here they sell templates, HTML for your email, WordPress, Joomla, etc. And so just taking a quick look here, here's some featured ones, here's some new ones. Let's just say, I'm gonna, what's this one? Educo. Um, it's HTML. You have to specifically look that it says WordPress. This is kind of confusing sometimes. You have to see that it specifically says it's a WordPress theme. The one I saw a moment ago was just a plain HTML theme, which is not exactly compatible. You just have to make sure You've clicked on the one that is compatible with WordPress. Question. Uh, just to clarify, um, if you have WordPress.com blog, you can't grab any of these. Exactly. Yeah. You have to look through the through the WordPress appearance and themes and look look at their marketplace there. You can't get any from outside. Because again, if I were to get this one that I really like off the shelf. It's from a different company. It's not affiliated at all with WordPress.com. Therefore, they don't want to tech support it. So they don't give you that ability. And, um, WordPress.com blogs, do they have uh, themes that support video content? They should. That should be a, 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 a thing that when you're looking here and you look at the details, it'll probably mention somewhere that it is optimized for video, but most of them should be compatible with video, but some might be optimized for video. So just look at the description. Can I just come up with 
Yeah. What's that? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like it does does have it. You just searched it. Okay, so you two can connect with each other a little bit later. Yes. So um, here's a possible theme. It costs fifty-nine dollars for a regular license. Uh, you need to read the details. Uh, it says this this is for use by you or one client in a single end product which the end users are not charged for the total price includes item price and a buyer fee in short that's saying you're paying fifty nine dollars to use it on one site if I as the as a developer if I get hired to make a website for someone um, I uh, come to this site to to pick up a theme for them with them and I then make a theme based on that one for them, but I can only do it for one client. I can't myself download this theme and use it for 10 clients. That's what this is saying. There is then the extended license, which is a little more expensive, and then you can have, you can use it many more times, and um, it has different features. So, this is going to tell you it's got a drag and drop page builder, SEO optimized. I can do a live preview. What does it actually look like? Looks like this, like modern websites do nowadays. Very clean, big pictures and swatches of color and thumbnails and all of that. And so, okay, this is a marketplace. Any crazy person can upload any crazy theme. Yes, but Envato tries to keep quality control. So notice it says quality check by Envato. It has future updates, six months of support from the original developer, Shaping Rain. Then we can see this is an elite author. This particular author, um, I forget exactly what it means, but it means that they've really worked a lot on en Envato and sell, sold their products. They uh, apparently are located in Canada. They are an exclusive. They only sell their themes through Envato, nowhere else. Trendsetter had an item that was trending, etc. Author level has sold more than a quarter of a million on Envato. So they've been around, they've been selling. And uh, affiliate level two, and so forth. So this is how you can tell. It's got 32 sales, how many comments, updated on the 29th just yesterday. Is it compatible with all your web browsers? Great. Is it compatible with WooCommerce? Great. Gravity Forms? Yes. WordPress this and that, PHP, it's well documented, responsive. So that's the point of being on Envato. You are then going to be rated and reviewed and analyzed so that it's a good theme. It's not a theme that someone made in their garage that has a hidden code in there that's going to steal credit cards. You're getting it from a marketplace where where it's scrutinized and then there's the ability for people to comment and for the, for the for the group for the users to help each other out so in my WordPress class I talk about there being three levels of WordPress design This is specifically us as a company doing a website for a client. Uh, the first level is start with a theme, customize as allowed. The cost of that, not too expensive, and then the customization ability is just one level, let's say. So what I mean here is we, my company gets contracted by another company, they want a website. So uh, we go either to the WordPress 
market right here, or we go to elegant themes, or we go to Envato, and with the client, you know, sit with them and say, let's look at some themes, let's look at this and that, and we recommend this one because your product needs that, or we don't recommend that one because it doesn't have this feature. So we sit with the client and we go and we look for a theme, either a free theme or a paid theme, doesn't matter. Because all of these themes, even if it's a free theme, will have some ability to customize that the original author allowed. I've currently got a theme installed, and if I go to customize, the theme author has let us edit the colors, the header image, menus, and so forth. But there's no mention there about editing the size of the font. I want a different font, but the theme author never allowed it. So, based on the customization ability, that's level one. Start with a theme, paid or premium, and customize it you know, something as allowed. Yes? Something to mention, because I've, I've done a lot of homework on taking themes out, made a, a lot of errors in that way. Is, uh, the difference between a paid theme to me and a a free theme is, is the uh, customer support because, gosh, if you're new at it and you can't get a question answered and you're trying to do it on your own, you can really get stuck for a long time. Yes. So that's one of the big upsides of paying for a theme. You might be morally adverse to, why would I pay for a theme which is just pixels on the screen? $40 for that? I'm, I need to buy groceries. Well, those $40 are going to pay you for your tech support, and that's going to be invaluable. When you're stuck on your, your theme, why is my font suddenly red and I can't change it? Why does this plugin not work? And I don't know why. I'm not tech savvy enough. Paying for the, for the theme and paying for support is really helpful. The next level up, I would again start with a theme, paid or premium, but then customize via HTML. The cost of that for the customer, the more expensive, but the customization ability is much higher. And by, by this I mean, yes, I would still go to Envato, or I would still go to Elegant Themes, or the plain old WordPress marketplace with the client, and we choose a perfect theme and such, but then the client says, I would love it if this logo were bigger. I would love it if the sidebar had a drop shadow. I would love it if this and that. There is no ability that the theme author allowed for that, but on the level two, we have the ability to go to Appearance, Editor. This is also something not in WordPress.com. But we have the ability to go to Editor, and there's all of the code. The curtain is pulled back, and all the features there are laid bare of the theme. I can go in and edit aspects that the author never really made a pretty button for. I can go in and say, I'm going to go to the footer, and I'm going to edit here. I'm tired of it saying, proudly pub." proudly powered by WordPress. I'm tired of that. Here's the place for me to edit that. Semantic personal publishing platform WordPress. I don't want to say that. I want to say copyright Victor. Well, I just need to edit the code. I just need to edit the code. This requires that I have experience in code. How many of you have any experience in HTML? Very few people, as we see here. So this is a whole class. This is a whole four-week, eight-week, twelve-week class. I'm learning HTML code. But if you have this ability, you'll be able to edit things that the theme author never... Not that they don't allow you, but it's the theme author doesn't want you to break your site. Because editing code here can break your site. One wrong command, not one wrong command, one wrong character. That one character, this one letter, if I mistype it, if I wrote piv instead of div, that might break my whole site. One letter, one character, not one command, one letter. So, how many of you are comfortable popping the hood of your car and getting in there to work? A couple of people, also very, very small, just like HTML. Same thing here. Same thing here. This is popping the hood of your WordPress. 
site and going in, to, going in there to change things. Now, on a technical terms, changing your own oil, technically not that complicated, but most of us never do it because we're busy, we're maybe intimidated, we don't want to, we pay for it, great, that's what the pros at the shop are for. That's what the pros uh, as a web design company is there for, to do this stuff. So that's why level two that we offer a client is this. Okay, let's start with the theme that you like, but then let's customize it. Because the thing about level one is your site may look the same like 40 other people. We saw on Envato that it said this was downloaded 40 times. So your site may look very similar to 39 other people. Even if the theme author lets you change the background color and put your own font, it kind of still looks in general like someone else's. And you may never run into that site because there's billions of websites out there. But your site may look very similar to another site. Level two is we take that starting point and we then customize it much more. It's like taking a fixer-up house. You bought that house because it was at a certain location or maybe it had a certain aesthetic and style, but then it's a fixer-upper. You tear out the, the countertops and put in granite countertops and you redo the driveway and you do this and that. It was still that original house and it still has its original foundation and features and such, but now it's a new house. Very similar here. We started with that original WordPress theme and we tear out that sink and put in a brand new one. We change the driveway and we've got a new driveway on the site. It's going to be more expensive because that's going to require us, the developer, rolling up our sleeves and editing all of this code that for most people looks like gibberish, magic, voodoo. And what you're going to get is a, very, a much more customized site, more expensive. The third level that we would offer a client, start from scratch, from the beginning, a blank sheet of paper, a blank document where we write all of this code ourselves. The cost of that. So you don't use WordPress at all? You still use WordPress because you still need that foundation, that core foundation. But then now all of the visuals and all of the functionality, that's all completely customized. The customization of that then, of course, is also going to be very unique. No one else is going to have that because it was built just for that client. Notice how quickly this escalated. Because starting a site from scratch is going to require a site that has most likely these programming languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. So are you building your own theme? Yeah. Building your own theme from scratch. And it requires basically knowledge in all of those languages. And each one, each one of those languages is a whole semester. Each one of those languages is a whole college degree, basically. Uh, and so that's why it's much more expensive. When we meet with a client and we tell them these three things, we ourselves tell them, don't bother with number three. You're going to use all your money just to design the look of your site. Because to have a good website, as we've talked about in this class, you need content, you need social media, as we'll talk about more, you'll need blogging, you'll need marketing. It's not just a great looking site. So we tell them, if you've got a $5,000 budget, Really, you're going to blow it all most likely on number three, just to design the site. $3,000, $5,000 easily, just to design a site. You might as well spend some amount of that money on the level two, and then the rest of it on social media and blog writing and all of that stuff. If you've got $3,000, you know, we'll spend 2000 or so on level two to design the site, and then you've got 3,000 left for social media, for writing blogs, etc. None of these assume, however, any e-commerce features. Then you add more dollars to that because that requires more customization, database integration, product integration, and so forth. So if you ever see those, those commercials and such that say, build your website for $250, uh, laugh at that. I laugh at that. You should laugh at that because you're not going to get a very customized thing. You're not going to get a very robust thing. Um, you're going to get a cookie cutter thing that you might not be happy with, and that you pay a little bit more, a little bit more, and suddenly you're at a you're at a cost that you've already should have already spent a little bit more professionally.
Yes. Well, um, the you really need to focus a bit more on updating the content of your site. The look of your site can be held off for years. Uh, if it's got good content, uh, you're, as you browse these themes of these modern hip designers and such, you will see that they have similarities, like even here. Big graphic, section of text, bold colors. Big graphic, section of text and pictures, bold colors. They're going to be very similar. There's a current aesthetic, a current trend nowadays of sites like this. But your site doesn't have to look like these modern sites as long as the content here and the functionality is what people want. So you can hold off one year, two years, three years. The big caveat on that though, the caveat on that is that if your site is not mobile friendly, if it's not responsive, then as soon as possible update it. So those keywords here. Yeah. So mobile friendly, aka responsive design. You really want that. You really want that on a theme. You may have a great theme that looks really nice and has all, all of your features, but then you, you realize it's not mobile friendly. One quick way to test if it's mobile friendly is if you if you're looking at it on the web browser and you shrink your screen and the screen changes see how that changed the buttons changed the alignment changed everything when I'm that big notice my menu says about blog etc but when I'm shrunk down like this like on a mobile device the menu gets compacted here until someone needs it this is one quick way to check it, but it's not always the foolproof way to confirm it's mobile friendly. A better way would be to check it on a mobile device. Yeah. I noticed Google Analytics, they really get into it. I, I got messages saying you were able to do a, a tappable uh, yeah. icon that you close together. Mm -hmm. It breaks it down to the pixel, the, or the width of the fingertip, and it needs to be more than this much distance. That's why you want Google Analytics and Google Webmaster and Bing Webmaster set up so that the search engines tell us our problems, our issues. They have an SEO analyzer built in and we should adhere to what they're telling us, which is more and more people are using a mobile device. More and more mo nowadays, most probably are using a mobile device. You yourself, maybe not, but if you look at the statistics and the trends, many people, most people are on mobile. Therefore, if your website does not look good on mobile, if you visit your website and all the text is really small and you have to zoom in to read it, most likely it's not mobile friendly. Your website text is a dead giveaway. It should be big enough so that you read it as soon as you see the site. You don't want to zoom in. Most likely it's not mobile friendly. And you're going to get dinged by the search engines and harder as time goes on because more traffic is coming through mobile. As I said, Jetpack that plugin has a way to turn any theme that is not mobile friendly, mobile friendly. The downside of it is it's a sort of a one size fits all approach. I've got this design with these great colors that I like and so forth, but it's not mobile friendly, let's say. I turn on Jetpack mobile friendly feature and it'll make it mobile friendly, but it'll look kind of generic and not so customized. Your content though will look great. Your content will be mobile friendly. The design of it, though, might not be the exact design that you wanted. So then that's why you want to have a site that is billed as mobile friendly. Responsive. You're going to see that somewhere. Right away at the top here. Responsive and retina ready. Retina means that it's also high quality graphics that look good on a retina display. It just means high quality graphics that are not blurry. And most of the ones from, or pretty much all the ones from Elegant Themes and Envato are going to be like that nowadays. But if you go do a search such as best WordPress salon themes, because you can do a search outside of the two places that I mentioned in this website right here. 
17 or more spa and salon WordPress themes over at Theme Garden. I haven't checked them. I don't know anything about them really, but they may be selling or giving away themes that look really nice, but they're not mobile friendly. You're going to shoot yourself in the foot if you don't start off mobile friendly. So we talked about some plugins, we talked about some themes. We'll take a break in just a moment. Any general questions about what I've mentioned so far? He either upgraded the theme or the plugin, and it looked beautiful. It was so easy when he was showing me. But um, what happened was the new look of his website, when he went to have it mass mailed to everyone that's on his list, it came out terribly disproportionate and very strange looking. And he got multiple responses, which you know. Yet on his website, he upgraded whatever he did. I think he paid for the theme, actually. It looked beautiful, but somehow it wasn't compatible with whatever he was using. I don't know if it was MailChimp when he sent out. Um, so I'm wondering if there was, I, I don't understand. I don't think he does either quite what went wrong when he changed the theme of his site and it got mailed out to his list of people. It looked rather horrible. I don't know. I'd have to look also because I don't I don't know if MailChimp and such, if it takes a screenshot of your site to send out or if it recreates it in a table, I don't know. So I sort of, however, don't think that they are related. The, the MailChimp campaign or whatever it was, I don't think it's supposed to simply just copy and paste your site and mail it to people. That doesn't quite sound right. I think the campaign, the email campaign should have been designed more optimized. I, I don't know exactly what to say. Notice here it says also you get email templates. So maybe the email template was not included in the website template and therefore the one that's being mailed to people looks weird. But um, it could be multiple things and maybe we can look at it during the lab time and such. But off the top of my head I don't, I don't know what the problem would be. Any other general questions? Okay, let's take a break. It's about 11. We'll be back at 11.10, and uh, we'll talk more SEO.